Uh, today we're doing 4.3. We're going to prove that, that lines are parallel. And uh, I have a shoe over here. What, what type of shoe is this? It's a converse, right? Um, and as it turns out, we're going to use the converse of a lot of different things. Uh, we've touched on this before, but it's worth bearing mention again that a lot of times we have statements in the form of if then, um, right? So we say if something is true, then this other thing has to be true. So for example, if we say if two angles are supplementary, then the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. Um, so we have an if part and then we have a then part. Um, I'll highlight the if here in blue, say. So this is the if, and that means this is the then. Um, yes, son? I don't know where your book is. I'm sorry. Um, this is, the converse says if Q, then P. So we're going to switch. Um, what used to be the statement is now the... Um, the, the condition, um, right? So we're going to switch this up. Instead of saying if two angles are supplementary, then the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. We're going to say if the sum of their measures, two angles, um, is 180 degrees, then the two angles are supplementary. Um, so, uh, sorry. We can say that they're supplementary, but if the sum of the measures of the two angles is 180 degrees. All right, so we've We've now switched it around. Um, and in fact, this is what we're going to do for um, our three new theorems or postulates. These are essentially old ones. There's nothing new here to remember except that these are converses. So the first is the converse of the same side interior angle postulate, the converse of the alternate interior angles theorem, and the converse of the corresponding angles theorem. If you can remember the same side interior angle postulate, the alternate interior angles theorem, and the corresponding angles theorem, then um, you've got these made because all you have to do is just make the converse of them. You switch the if-then part. So remember the same side into your angle postulate. Let's find two same side into your angles. We have angle three and angle six. These are same side into your angles. Um, the, the regular same side into your angle postulate um, simply stated that if you had two parallel lines cut by a transversal, the same side interior angles were what? They were supplementary, right? That was the conclusion that we came from, was that these, these angles added up to 180 degrees. Um, for this one, it's gonna be switched around. We're gonna say, um, if, if you know, we have the situation where the same side interior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. That's our conclusion. Similarly, we can do the same thing for the alternate interior angles theorem. If we have alternate interior angles, so say angle four and angle six, um, if these guys are congruent, right? So if any pair of alternate interior angles are congruent, then we can say the lines are parallel. Um, and finally, we have the um, the corresponding angles theorem. So if we have two corresponding angles, say angle one and angle five here, um, if the, these are cut by a transversal so that the corresponding angles are congruent. So if the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. Notice here the conclusion for all three of these is that the lines are parallel. So that's all we're able to prove um, using any of these three uh, converses is that the lines are parallel because that was our condition uh, for the originals. Uh, let's do some examples. Uh, the first one here, we have our little diagram of a, uh, it's like a parallelogram, right? Um, this is supposed to be a tile, and then we put a bunch of these tiles together. So the first part here, A, use the values of the marked angles to show that the two lines are parallel. It's a little hard to see here, but um, there's two shades. You can see that in your book. And this represents one tile, this represents another tile. So on this tile, we know some of these angles, right? We know that angle one is 120 because it's this corner here. We know that angle two is 60, so it's that corner there. Um, are they supplementary or congruent? Well, they're supplementary. Um, so therefore, we can say that these two lines are parallel using the converse of the same side interior angle postulate. Because they're same side interior angles, they're supplementary, therefore, these lines are parallel. All right, now we'll try this one. Uh, same sort of deal. 
angle one, well, that's 120 degrees. Angle two, well, that's 120 degrees. What's their relationship? As it turns out, they're congruent. So because these angles are congruent, what type of angles are these? Let's think about that. We have two parallel lines cut by a transversal. These are, are they alternate interior angles? No, they're not both on the inside. Are they same side interior angles? No, they're not both on the inside. Um, are they corresponding angles? Yes, they are. They're both in this upper left-hand corner. Um, therefore, they're corresponding angles. So using the corresponding angles, to, or the converse, um, because of the corresponding, sorry, I should put converse. Um, because of the converse of the with the uh, corresponding angles theorem misspelled theorem. Why does there an external in there? Theorem. Anyway, um, corresponding angles theorem, sure then um, we can say that lines one uh, or line one is parallel to line two. Ta-da! Cool. Moving on. Suppose that the designer had been working with this basic shape instead. Do you think the conclusions in part A and part B would be different? Um, why or why not? Well, again, we have a parallelogram. Again, this angle is supplementary to that angle. Um, therefore, it, it, it shouldn't matter at all. Uh, let's go ahead and try this one. Uh, so four, four and five, uh, see if you can do those ones. I'll pause here, see if you can figure those out. All right. uh, so for this one, we would, uh, again, the conclusion is pretty obvious that the two lines are parallel, right? But the question is, how do we know, right? Explain why. Um, and what we're going to use for this one is the converse. of the, um, this one is alternate interior angles. Converse of the alternate interior angles theorem. And this one here is the converse of the same side interior angles postulate. Okay. So moving on. Um, when we're doing a, a construction, so let's say we have a line. Uh, this is my beautiful line L, um, and we have a point P here. Point P. How many different lines could we make that are parallel to line L that go through point P? Um, and as it turns out, there's there's only one. There's only one possible line. Um, we know that because it has to go through P. So um, you can think of like all possible, right? You could have like a, one like this, one like this, one like this. But only one of those possible lines is actually perfectly parallel to line L. Um, another way to think of that is you could have lots of parallel lines, right? And you could have one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Um, but only one of those infinite parallel lines passes through point P. So um, keep that in mind. There is exactly one line parallel to L that passes through point P. Um, at least that, that isn't on line L. Um, we're going to use those angle pair relationships just, just to verify that these lines are parallel, right? So again, um, this is just comes down to identifying kind of the relationship between these two angles. Angles 3 and 5, well, um, what are these angles? They are alternate interior angles, right? So we can use the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem. Um, it gets a little harder when we throw some algebra in, right? We can... Um, mix it up just so we can um, prove whether or not things are congruent or things are supplementary. 
Um, so for example, angle four, it says is x plus 20. Angle eight is two x plus five. And angle, um, oh, and x is 15, right? Um, so they, they let us plug x in here, I guess. Um, so the measure of angle four, I'll bring this down, measure of angle four equals, I know x is 15 plus 20. What's 15 plus 20? That's 35. Uh, the measure of angle 8, that's 2x plus 5, 2, 15 times 15 plus 5, so that's 35. So angles, uh, angles 4 and angles um, 8, so they are they, are they complementary, are they supplement, supplementary, or are they um, congruent? Um, and in this case, since they have the same angle measurement, um, Eight and four are congruent angles. Um, so are the lines parallel? Yes, they are. How do we know? Yes, these lines are parallel because angle four is congruent to angle eight, um, and that is the uh, corresponding angles there, or the converse, sorry, of corresponding. Converse of the corresponding angles there. Okay. Uh, this one, I'll leave this one blank. Uh, you go ahead and do this one. Pause right there. Pause. I'm trying to remember what this is. I think it's a map of Alaska. It's hard to see though. Okay. Um, this is angle three plus angle six equals 180 degrees. Does this information tell us um, that these lines are parallel? Well, let's look and see where angle three and angle six are. Angle six is here, angle three is there. These angles, if these angles are supplementary, does that mean that these two lines are parallel? Um, yes, it does, using the converse of the same side into your angle postulate. Uh, what about angles two and angle six? Uh, let's identify those. Angles two and angle six, angles two and angle six, um, they're congruent to each other. So therefore, yes, using the converse of the corresponding angles theorem. Oh, this is supposed to be secret. Um, how are the converses of this lesson different from the postulates and theorems? Remember, we switched the uh, ifs and thens. So um, basically, our only conclusion is that the two lines are parallel. Suppose two lines are cut by a transversal such that alternate interior angles are both congruent and supplementary. Um, so let's go ahead and draw a little picture here. So here's my line. I'm going to cut with a transversal. They're saying that um, alternate interior angles, so alternate interior angles, so this angle here and this angle here, are not only congruent, which happens when these lines are parallel, right? Um, but that they're also supplementary. So what values, right? Again, this is like, you can think of this as x. We're saying that x plus x equals 180, right? Um, but they're also congruent, so it's x plus x. So what value is x? Well, it's 90, right? So it'd be perpendicular is the term you're going for. The transversal is perpendicular. Um, you should know perpendicular. It'll come up many, many times in the future. Perpendicular to the other two lines. Uh, name two ways to test. Oh, that's a dumb question. I'll skip it. Okay. Um, one last thing before I turn you loose for the, your problems. Um, note here that uh, this first section, um, it needs some values in here. Um, and what they're getting at is that um, they want you to use the, um, uh, the let's see, the first one was um, the same side into your angle postulate, right? Because that's the first one they introduced. So that's angles three and angle six. And then they want you to use the corresponding angles postulate. So that's angles one and angles five. And then the uh, last one, um, I would have just have you figured out, but I accidentally wrote down four. So um, this was uh, angles four and angle six, so that's alternate into your angles. Um, so just uh, some people got confused on this part, and it isn't really important to the problem, but um, you need to know these just to, to do the other problems. So um, fill this out, and then uh, you're able to, to do the problems when we, when we get there. Thanks. That's all I got. Have a good one.